Hey everyone, Direwolf20 here, episode 4 of my Let's Play featuring Industrial Craft, Build Craft, and Equivalent Exchange. Uh, my last episode, I built a couple new items. Uh, I got a diamond drill, got my portal gun, uh, I made a wireless remote that interacts with some wireless redstone uh, that activates an orange portal when I activate the remote. So that anywhere I am in my world, I can now use my portal gun to create a blue portal and make my way home. So that's great. Uh, in this episode, I'm probably going to try and get a couple more items. I'm also going to work towards... Um, I think I want to go find some reeds outside. I did explore a little bit around my house at one time, but I couldn't find a good amount of reeds. Um, so I need to find some of those. I want to create a recipe book. And um, sometimes I don't feel bad about tmi myself a recipe book, but trying to legitly play this mod um, for my Let's Play. So I'm going to go find some reeds. Uh, hopefully I can find someone some, somewhat nearby. Nothing too exciting, but I will show one nice feature about the Portal Gun mod. Don't have to swim across uh, big, large oceans. <laughs> about time. Not only did I find some reeds, exactly what I'm looking for here. Tell this area was just generated because those reeds were only a height of two. A little bit more clay, look at that. Let me chew this up real quick. Okay, gonna explore this little weird pattern up here. Whoa, gotta love when that happens. see too many cactuses near my house. So, oh, out of inventory space, huh? Don't need to hang on to any of that junk. Because I see more clay. Wow, not too shabby. Alright, once I mine this out, I'm heading back home. Rather paltry amount of clay. So, I've been running around for a good 15 minutes or so. Now, where did that skeleton come? Just spawn up there in the middle of the day, did he? Is there a cave up here, I wonder? Of course. There's a cave up here. Whoa, with lots of skeletons. Alright. Um, so I've been running around for how long now? I don't know, 10 minutes. I'm gonna pulse my frequency on my portal gun and jump on in. Hey, look, I'm home. No idea where I just was, but I found my way home. some of that tree sap too. As it's getting laid out, I'm just going to drop my reeds here. I'd like them to grow a little bit, get some more of them. And I can drop my resin in here. And the nice thing about an electric furnace is you can smelt all the clay in the world and it won't really use up your resources that much. Alright, two more items I'm going to build here real quick. I mentioned in my last video the bat box. I want to build that for you guys real quick. Or, I'm sorry, the bat pack, not the bat box. So, let me just charge up one more. Now oh, I have power up here. Alright, I'll venture outside. Oh, great. Totally out of power. So, my machines have stopped running. Uh, Alright, one of these probably has. Yep because it's running all those furnaces and stuff, five little solar powers is not, uh, solar uh, collectors are really not gonna power these machines quite as nicely. I also just filled up five batteries, which used up a good percentage of my uh, power resources here. So, let's see how lucky I can get. Charging up this last battery will probably take a bit. You know what, I'm just gonna charge it in my generator. and I kept this guy around, right? So while that charges, you need six fully charged batteries to build a bat pack. I'm going to build some prereqs for it.
other item I'm going to build is from the portal gun mod. And it's built like so. And I'll show you why this is a really nice item to have. So I'm going to just lay down two diamonds. I'm building two of these items. These are heal springs. And if you build two of them and place them next to each other, you get the advanced knee replacement. Uh, this is an item from the portal game that pretty much uh, helped with fall damage. And it does the exact same thing in this game. Really nice for the portal gun, especially when you're like, you know, jumping off high cliffs. So I can put up a portal up here and boom. No more fall damage. Uh, one of the items in industrial craft also negates fall damage. And I'll probably be getting that item eventually. But for now, it's a great way to make sure you don't have any problems with your portal guns. And hopefully... Looks like it just finished charging. Perfect timing. Let's put these guys together in a nice way. Packs are just like a battery. Uh, they can be charged in uh, in uh, bat boxes and MFEs and MFSUs. Um, they hold, I'm gonna say, 60,000 energy units because it made a lot of sense. We just made it with six batteries and they hold 10,000 each, so this thing holds 60,000. So it's like having six batteries on your shoulder. Um, I want to see now how this works. So if you look at my uh, Away here. Keep an eye on the charge of my drill down there. It's actually going up as I use it, so it's probably draining battery power out of the bat box. And the bat lost a little bit of energy, so it, it kind of recharges the drill as you use it, it looks like, and uh, that's kind of neat. Like I mentioned earlier, the bat box will last a lot longer than just holding the drill by itself. So now I can go mine for a little while longer without having to be bothered um, with all that annoying recharging of my of my mining drill. It won't last forever, of course, but a good amount of time. So I'm probably going to go do a little bit of mining right now real quick and just add some growth. Come back shortly. I will be back shortly to uh, demo a couple more items for you guys. So I just want to point something out to you guys here. I don't know if you can kind of tell, but uh, my macerator and my electric furnace are struggling to keep up the energy demands. They're both using a little bit more energy between them, along with uh, all the extractor stuff. And my solar power can really create for me here. We've only got five solar collectors. It's doing its best to keep up with the demands, but as you uh, create more machines and want to do more things, you need more energy. So I'm going to build a few more solar collectors. That's why I'm macerating this coal here. Once I get this uh, depth to 24, I'll be able to... Uh, yeah. See, it's struggling to keep up the electric furnace. It's not getting enough electricity to run. So once I get that to 24, I'm going to build a few more solar panels, so I'll be back in a minute once that's done. Alright, so quickly going to build 8 more solar panels. 8 furnaces. Come 8 iron furnaces. iron and iron furnace comes up with a generator. Now I need to convert that generator into a solar panel as I... Hooray! Eight solar panels. 
just a little bit there when I started recording, but I think it's all right now. I'm just going to finish off that solar panel flower, as I mentioned to you guys earlier. We can finish out this design, plant some flower material like so. I think I happen to have just one more cable. Solar flower in all its glory. Thing of beauty. So now we're going to be filling up our bat box a lot quicker than we were before. Look how much quicker that's filling up. So, very nice. Okay guys, I think my Minecraft was lagging a little bit. I resolved the issue. Looks to be running a lot smoother now. So, uh, let's get back to it. Next thing I want to make is some paper. And a book. Add an ink sack to our book for the recipe book. This is that mod I was talking about. All it does is give you a nice little book in your hand that shows you every recipe in the game. Um, pretty much that's it. So, uh, you can see here, plenty of good stuff. Clicking through, all kinds of neat recipes. This is uh, for some of the red wiring mods. So, now I've got a recipe book, so that's good. I'm going to flip through here for a little bit. And here's what I was looking for. A slime ball recipe from the Equivalent Exchange mod. Um, anyone not familiar with Equivalent Exchange will know that, um, uh, should know that it's a mod that pretty much does transmutations. It gives you a lot of recipes to create a lot of things in the world. I wasn't sure if I needed the Philosopher's Stone to make the slime ball with this mod, and I do not. Which is good, because um, the slime ball is an ingredient in the Philosopher's Stone. Because of this mod, I'll be able to get started on my Philosopher's Stone without finding a slime in the wild. So, what I was mentioning earlier about slimes luckily does not apply. I'm probably also going to be heading off to the Nether shortly, so stay tuned for that. Alright, I've decided that the small amount of energy storage I have now, just because I've upgraded my solar panels, I can only store 80,000 energy units, so I'm going to build an MFE transmitter. Um, not entirely sure how this guy's going to work. Um, the way it worked in the older industrial craft was a little different than I think it works now. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and build one and figure it out as I go along. So the new recipe calls for a good amount of materials. It's going to use uh, four diamonds, it looks like some cables, and I'm going to need a machine here. So, one of the items we're going to need to use, showing this here, energy crystals. Cool. And energy crystals are kind of like bigger batteries, think of them. They're the tier 2 energy storage device relative to batteries. So, where a rechargeable battery can only store 10,000 energy, um, the energy crystal itself can store 100,000. And it takes four energy crystals. Uh, so basically an energy crystal can store 10 times as much as a battery, and it takes four energy crystals to make this MFE. Um, forget what MFE stands for. Multifunctional Electric Transmitter. So, let's go ahead and make this guy. There we have it. Now, before really hooking this guy up to anything, I'm going to lay him down here. Now, this guy's output is 128 energy per second, which is, I think, too much energy uh, for these machines. It could damage the machines if I uh, start putting our, uh, power into the MFE. So, let's see if I can adjust the output. I cannot. So I think I need a transformer. I need to make a low voltage transformer. So let me go grab a couple more items here real quick. I'll be right back. Alright, I'm running out of copper. I think I'm completely out, unfortunately. And it looks like copper is part of the recipe for that low voltage transformer. Yep. So let me go mine for a little bit and I'll be back. So I was recently commenting on how I'm having trouble finding rubber, so I did go and look on the industrial craft forums, and it turns out that copper is found more so at the middle levels than deep down below. Because I was mining all the way down there at 16, I was doing alright with diamonds and iron, all I could 
and stuff, but uh, it's around level 40 that you're going to find the most copper, so I'm just going to mine at this level for a little bit and see how well I do. Alright. Well, I think I can call my uh, level 40 excavation a pretty big success. I found a good uh, amount of copper here, almost 46 of them, so very nice. Uh, yeah, definitely recommend mining a little bit higher to get your copper. And see how quickly I can get back to my base. Don't you just love it? Oh, I left this wall open. Probably not smart of me. I'm gonna get to macerating this stuff and I'll be back in a moment. Alright, so something I'm gonna do here, guys, which will quickly cause a problem, is break this cable. Because um, I want to start testing how this MFE works. I don't really understand the current system yet, so this will probably shut down all my machines. They'll all lose power. Ta-da! Okay. Um, I'm gonna build that uh, transformer that I was talking about, the low voltage transformer, which um, basically there's three levels of voltage in the game. The uh, bat box is low voltage. It emits 32 energy units per time frame, and uh, that's what most machines can accept. The uh, MFE emits 128 units of energy per time frame. And if I were to wire this directly to one of my machines, um, I think it might explode, or something similarly bad would happen. So I'm just going to rotate this guy in this direction and build myself. Uh, I need more copper. Hang on. And I'm going together. One, two, three, copper. Wait. Low voltage transformer. Spiffy. Now, I'm going to suspect see what this guy looks like. So there's one dot on every side and three dots on this side. I'm going to think that the three dotted side is the medium voltage current. So that's where the medium voltage has to be wired to. Okay. And medium voltage cable, I believe is gold cable. Yes. So copper cable can only carry up to 32. So I need to grab some gold real quick. And gold cable is capable of carrying um, insulate this. See how I'm putting that insulated gold cable in and I'm getting um, doubly insulated gold cable? So that apparently um, has less energy loss? Yeah. So I haven't talked about energy loss much because uh, I kind of forgot about it, but I should go into it with you guys. Um, as energy travels along a cable, hello Mr. Cow, get out of here. As energy travels along a cable, there's actually some energy loss, and uh, depending on the type of cable, there's different amounts of energy loss. For example, copper cable will lose one unit of energy for every five blocks it travels. So this is actually a somewhat inefficient system the way I have it right now, because um, the energy traveling through this cable is being lost a significant amount of it. So I'm probably going to rewire this guy at some point. Uh, but for now, it's okay. Um, so that's energy loss. So basically, like, you lose energy. So there's 32 units of power going through here. After it travels 5 blocks, there's only 31. And 5 more, it's down to 30. 5 more, it's down to 29. So it's not a huge deal, um, but it is something you want to be cognizant of. So I am going to wrench this guy up. There we go. And I'm going to connect my gold cable, like 
checks out. So now I'm running the gold cable from, you know what, I want this to be the output face. So output face, gold cable, so output energy from the MFE to the medium voltage face on the low voltage transformer. Oops, double click there, I think. So now, any energy that's in here will be sent to the low voltage transformer and the voltage will be reduced down to uh, low voltage. And then I can run some normal cable. I'm just gonna connect this temporarily. And what I'm actually gonna do is, just in case, remember I said, uh, I'd blow up any machines that shouldn't be connected like this. Um, so if I'm doing this wrong, I might damage some of my machines in this room. That's why I disconnected the cable to the rest of my machines. I could always rebuild my uh, extractor if I need. So I'm going to throw some wood in there, actually. Um, it still had a charge from earlier. It wasn't running. That's why it still has energy, but you can see it's quickly dropping. So let's see how this works. I believe I can put my backpack in the bottom. No? Okay. So let's run some cable. So this guy should be juicing up. Let's see, what's the energy reader say for this? So that's how I'm going to want to cable my room right now. So you can see there's 31 energy running through here. Let's get this to be a good So if I read this guy, 31 energy. I guess that's because this is longer than five blocks. Okay, that makes sense. Now I see how it works. Yeah, because this is longer than five blocks, we lost one unit of energy. We should be getting 32, but we're not. And I'm going to disconnect this guy because I'm wasting energy as we speak. Okay, so that's cool. So now that I understand how this works, I'm going to wire it a little bit better. So let's take care of that. transformer, which I showed you earlier. There's two faces on this guy. There's the face that has the three dots, and every other face has one dot. The three dots is what you want to hook up to medium voltage. Um, medium voltage is 128 energy per second. So we've got this MFE here, and it's always going to output at 128 energy per second, which is too powerful for my machines. If I were to run this cable directly to these machines, they'd probably explode. So I need to downgrade it to low voltage by using this transformer. So this transformer inputs at 128 and outputs 32. I don't think there's any energy loss with it. It just downgrades the current and makes it, you know, good for everything else to use. Um, so I've got my bat box here. It's outputting power into one of the input faces on the MFE. And when I connect my cable, if I connect it correctly, There we go, the bat box is starting to drain. This guy's filling up. Energy's being converted down, and all my machines just powered back on because they're starting to get electricity again. So that's cool. So I just sealed up the walls around this MFE, and um, it's sitting here now. The reason I put this here is because you can charge batteries in it. So like if I put my diamond drill, which is currently uncharged in there, see it's starting to charge up and it's draining power.
so I can charge my, di my diamond drill. I believe I can charge the map pack. It's already full, but if it weren't, uh, you know, that would be cool. And, uh, yeah, so now I've got the MFE in my house, and I can charge anything from inside. It'll also hold, as you can see, 600,000 energy units, so a lot more energy storage than I had prior to this. Um, so now my solar collectors will be going all day, and I shouldn't have any energy problems for a while until I start building some more advanced machines here. So I'm going to wrap up episode 4 now. Um, I will catch you guys later. I hope you enjoyed uh, episode 4 of my Let's Play.